Hello, you're welcome to the news in brief on Graphic Online. In the headlines, Vice President Mahmoud Baumia explains how Ghana was digitizing the economy. President Okufuado urges world leaders to balance climate change mitigation and national development. Investors urge to rethink selling of Ghana's bonds in the international market. Police grant Jabin MC nominee bail after arresting him over a bribery allegation. And six people burned to death with 22 others in hospital after their vehicle was involved in an accident at Akumadan. The Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Dubaumia, today delivered a public lecture on the digitization of the Ghanaian economy. He said Ghana is globally renowned as a digitization pace setter on the African continent and explained how Ghana has achieved many global firsts in the many innovations through digitization. The lecture which took place at the Ashesi University with a number of international financial and tech institutions in attendance witnessed a narration from Dr. Baumia on how he has been spearheading Ghana's digitization drive. He spoke on the topic, using digitization to transform an economy, the Ghana story. With digitization as a fourth industrial revolution, Dr. Baumia elaborated on the Ghanaian success of how the Kufado government has used digitization to achieve a number of milestones which are addressing social and economic issues. How prepared is Ghana to compete in the emerging global digital revolution? Have we got in place the key pillars revolution? Is the system we have fit for purpose? Ladies and gentlemen, the first thing to note in talking about the digital revolution is that it is a data revolution. The Economist magazine in 2017 put it this way, and I quote, The world's most valuable resource is no longer oil, but data, end quote. Data is as important in this fourth industrial revolution as oil discoveries were for countries decades ago. Data is the basic requirement for participation in the emerging digital revolution. But it was clear when we assumed office that the system underpinning the operation of Ghana's economy was not designed for a data-driven economy. President Nana Dudanko Akufuado Today joined world leaders to discuss the best ways to mitigate climate change globally. Delivering Ghana's position on climate change at the UN Climate Change Conference in Scotland, President Akufuado said although Ghana acknowledges the importance and effects of climate change, Ghanaians believe that maintaining the country's development was equally crucial. The development and industrialization of the wealthy nations of today were also hinged on the exploitation of their natural resources. This development came at the expense of pollution and the emission of greenhouse gases. Even today, the Western world is responsible for 76% of carbon emissions. Ghana acknowledges the importance and effects of climate change and the urgent need to combat it. And we acknowledge equally the importance of protecting our development. We believe that a balance must be struck and maintained between our social, economic, and environmental imper imperatives. At the Graphic Business Thumbic Breakfast Meeting in Accra today, the Minister of State and the Ministry of Finance, Mr. Charles Edubwahin, urged investors who are selling off Ghana's bonds in the international market to rethink their action. He says the sentiments driving such moves did not reflect the true state of the economy. To Mr. Edubuahe, Ghana's economy is still strong while efforts are being made to achieve the deficit and revenue targets. Acknowledging the heightened sell-off of Ghana's bonds, Mr. Edubuahe expressed the confidence that the situation will normalize soon when the bondholders get to appreciate the realities in the economy. This budget is focused on expenditure rationalization and optimizing the implementation of flagship and strategic programs. 
widening and deepening existing revenue sources, including expanding the tax net. Um, due to the elevated debt levels in 2020, we saw our fiscal space continue to be eaten up by high interest expense. Um, if you look at how much of our revenue we're using to service our debt, it is clear that we need to look at how we can reduce the cost of borrowing. Um, I see my, my good friend here, an MD of Stambic Bank, um, what he didn't tell you is that we had a meeting with him and his colleagues and we were like, you know, guys, this interest rate environment is not sustainable. How can we see, what can we do to reduce the rates so that we can get the impetus to move this economy forward? At the same ceremony, the CEO of Stambic Bank and the Managing Director of the Graphic Communications Group Limited had this to say. Clearly, our budgets are prepared with painstaking detail and presented with precision. But a gap often emerges between what our leaders want to achieve and the required discipline for meshing strategy with reality, aligning people with goals, and achieving the results promised. To what extent are the action plans that the budgets represent and which are to support the government's strategic plan appropriate? Will execution discipline be enhanced with more detailed operating plans, complete with time-bound activities and targets that synchronize and provide a framework for all of the government's divisions? One of the key outtakes, I believe, for many a consumer, many a business, is potentially a hope that there will be no new taxes in the year 2022. But that may be our wish. What will be the decision of the experts, the demands of uh, business, the demands of the wider society? Government obviously needs to drive revenue generation and grow the base to enable a further revenue collection that would enable the budget to be sustainable and to be sustained. The Municipal Chief Executive nominee for Jabin in the Ashanti region, Alex Safu Kantanka, has been granted a police inquiry bill after being arrested for his alleged involvement in a bribery incident. Mr. Kantanka is alleged to have paid some monies to some assembly members to influence his confirmation as MCE. The nominee has been surrounded with controversy after he obtained just six votes out of 26 in the first round of voting and 10 votes in the second round. Mr. Kantanka has been seen in a video allegedly demanding a refund of money he paid to some assembly members for his endorsement. His failure to secure the endorsement degenerated into verbal exchanges between him and some assembly members following the decision by the assembly members not to endorse him. Meanwhile, Mr. Kantanka, after the police bill, has been heard in a radio interview explaining why he gave the money to one Yeboa. And in our final story, at least six people, mainly traders, have been confirmed dead and burned beyond recognition. 22 people are in critical condition after their vehicle was involved in an accident at Akumadan in the Ashanti region Tuesday dawn. According to the police, the incident happened around 4.30 on Tuesday. The police said investigations are ongoing, but have mentioned that they suspect fatigue could have accounted for the accident. They are therefore advising drivers to travel in pairs to assist each other in case one was tired. The incident happened just a day after a similar accident on the same stretch where 17 people were killed. News in Brief was brought to you by Graphic News Plus. Download your Graphic News Plus now and choose your preferred package daily, weekly, monthly and annually and access free news on various interest areas as well. Graphic News Plus, connecting people through news. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and protect yourself from COVID-19. For more news, visit graphic.com.gh or log on to Facebook at Daily Graphic and on YouTube at GraphicGH. I am Enoch Dafafrimpong.